Hello friends, today I am going to discuss about rheumatoid arthritis. These all references have been taken from the standard medical textbooks. So you can uh, fairly enough rely on these informations. So to begin with, what is the rheumatoid arthritis or it is generally called as RA in the medical terms. RA that is the rheumatoid arthritis. To begin with, the rheumatoid arthritis, it is a chronic inflammatory disease of the joints or the we can say it is the inflammatory disorder which affects the joints or the bones most typically the proximal interphalangeal joint is being affected right so now coming to the etiology what causes the rheumatoid arthritis as far as the etiology is concerned there are the certain genetic predispositions which influence the development of the rheumatoid arthritis as well as certain environmental triggers for example smokers alcoholics are very much prone to develop rheumatoid arthritis now when these genetic compositions or the factors intermingled with the environmental agents such as smoking alcohol then this leads to the development of rheumatoid arthritis of course some points of triggers are important in the initiation of the disease right so uh, now as far as the epidemiology is concerned it is more common in females than males and mostly the age group of the patients which we encounter in the daily practices it ranges from around 25 to 50 years of age this age can vary generally if a rheumatoid arthritis is being diagnosed in the patients who are more than 16 years of age if it is less than 16 years of age it is termed as JIA if less than 16 years if more than 16 years then are if all the clinical features of course only when all the clinical features are being seen in the uh, seen and the diagnostic parameters are being fulfilled then it is called as RA otherwise it, it is called as a juvenile idiopathic arthritis if it is in less than 16 years right so what happens now what are the uh, after the etiology let us comes to the clinical features of rheumatoid arthritis the rheumatoid arthritis it generally affects the joints if we draw a diagram of a patient then this represents the wholeness of the disease now in this diagram we can see the PIP the proximal interphalangeal joint are being involved the distal radial joint that is called as druj it is the first joint to be involved to be involved it is a first joint the distal radial joint that is this one that is a wrist joint it can also involve the elbows the shoulder joint the knee joints are being typically involved also sometimes the cervical and the hip to the minor extent can be involved but these are the main joints also the foot the the joints can be involved but nowadays these are not been taken into the diagnostic criteria right so this is primarily affected so what is the clinical significance of the joint involvement first that there is joint tenderness whenever we palpate the joint the, it becomes tender the patient winces with the pain second there is the evidence of early morning early morning stiffness early morning stiffness means the patient wakes up with a joint pain and it is relieved with 30 minutes or more of the activity throughout the day when the person works the pain improves it improves with the activity it improves with the activity right so these are the two typical features if the patient complains of the joint tenderness 
and there is a early morning stiffness that too should have to be six weeks or more to make the diagnosis now to make the diagnosis clinically of rheumatoid arthritis the ACR ULR criteria ACR ULR criteria is being used the ACR stands for American College of Rheumatology and the European League for uh, against the rheumatoid arthritis that has devised uh, rheumatology has devised a scale to measure the rheumatoid arthritis or to label or not so there are certain clinical features such as joint involvement some marks have been given some scores have been provided for example if only large joint involved two zero if more joints are involved then certain scores one two three four five like that and small joints with more than ten large joints involved the score is five it, okay so this is the first parameter the second parameter comes that it says if there is serology done for the patient that is the rheumatoid factor and the CCP if these are either positive or negative or positive with the high titer and the low titer there are the different scorings have been provided third point comes with the acute phase reactants the acute phase reactants the acute phase reactants are C reactive protein ESR it depends upon the high or the low titer the marks are being adequately distributed and the last point comes the duration of the disease the duration of the disease whether it is more than six weeks or it is less than six weeks if it is more than six weeks then one point is given or higher points are given and it is the lower points are given I'm not going into details of the score right so if we calculate the overall score and the overall score comes to more than or equal to 6 then it is diagnostic of RA the major part is this if the score comes out to be 6 or more then it is diagnostic for rheumatoid arthritis right so the patient comes with a distal radial joint involvement the early morning stiffness is there more than six weeks we calculate the score for the number of the tender joints involved the serology the acute phase reactants and the duration of the disease if it comes more than six then we will diagnose the patient as the patient of rheumatoid arthritis right more characteristically saying that there is the involvement of PIP that is a proximal interphalangeal joint only that are the typical findings if DIP is involved then we will not make the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis this should have to be careful because then we will search for some alternative diagnosis more commonly like psoriatic arthritis osteoarthritis these can be the uh, differential diagnosis for that if the DIP is involved like like osteoarthritis psoriatic arthritis right right so <coughs> this is the uh, clinical features part now there are some extra articular manifestations which have been ex uh, uh, sometimes felt by the patients like and this is the most common question that has been asked in the various entrance examinations also like what are the various extra articular manifestations what are the extra articular manifestations of ra because the rheumatoid arthritis it is an autoimmune disease so it involves so many extra articular organs also like if it involves the eyes it produces the sicca symptoms that is the dryness of the eyes the conjunctivitis the keratitis kinds of things then it can involve the oral cavity also there is also the sicca complex that is a uh, dryness of the mouth we can say dryness of the mouth dysphagia and the oral ulcers can sometimes be there uh, difficulty in opening mouth like cervical uh, the cervical uh, the in the cervical axillopathy can be there right and the next heart is the most common organ that can be involved that is like 
pericarditis, pericarditis, myocarditis, myocarditis can be there, right? So these are the uh, cardiomyopathies, cardiomyopathies can occur in these patients. Then the lungs can be involved, the lungs can be involved. Most commonly the patient's presence with a uh, interstitial lung disease here yeah, sorry to forget that it is a interstitial lung disease which is more commonly present in the patients of the ra right so these are the some extra articular manifestations which are being felt in the lungs we can also find the nodules we can find the kaplan's syndrome kaplan's syndrome we can find the felty's syndrome felty's syndrome Felty syndrome is suggestive of the neutropenia in the patients, right? So there are the certain extra articular manifestations of the rheumatoid arthritis. So uh, after discussing these extra articular manifestations and the clinical features of the rheumatoid arthritis, once we make the diagnosis of the rheumatoid arthritis, now comes the treatment part. The treatment part is the most important part right now. The treatment we all know that DMARDs, disease modifying, disease modifying anti-rheumatoid drugs. These are the drugs which are being conventionally used. Previously, gold penicillin was used, but not nowadays. Now, the DMARDs first to be started with are number one, methotrexate, and mind you, methotrexate should have to be started with low dose and gradually the dose should be increased the maximum tolerated dose is 25 milligrams per week it has to be supplemented with folic acid the folic acid should not be given on the day why on which methotrexate is being for example if you prescribe methotrexate on sunday then avoid folic acid on sunday and give folic acid on all other days or alternatively we can give 5 mg folic acid just before and after the methotrexate therapy right yes after the day that, that is a uh, day avoiding in one which the methotrexate is being given right second drug the DMRD is is sulfasalazine sulfasalazine salazine the dose of sulfasalazine is 500 mg we can give it BD we can give it TDS or we can give about 1 gram BD also right next is uh, after sulfasalazine the comes leflunomide leflunomide and the caution here is these drugs are not uh, fetal safe right if the patient wants to become pregnant then this is a red box in pregnancy these are not given right yes the next drug after leflunomide the which comes in the dmrd is as uh, <laughs> i can say hydroxychloroquine 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 is a very good drug hydroxychloroquine is a very good anti malarial which is a dmrd of course and it can be given in pregnancy it can be given in pregnancy right so these are the conventional dmrds after coming to the conventional DMRDs, now uh, there is something called as DAS28 score. DAS28 score is the disease activity score. Disease activity score. It is a complex formula by which we calculate there are the certain uh, indicators in that. That is the tender joint counts, the swollen joint counts, the ESR or the CRP and the patient global in assessment of the disease population global assessment it depends on that so after we calculate the das 28 score if it is increasing despite the therapy then we have to switch the therapy that means our therapy is not that good the next score which comes is SDI that is simplified disease activity index this score also uh, labels a patient as in the remission or mild moderate or severe disease activity it determines the uh, quality of the treatment which the patient is receiving 
and we can modify the treatment of course by calculating s die and das 28 score on each and every visit we have to calculate that right now uh, once we are planning to start the dmrds the first thing that is the first thing we have to investigate the patient first for esr the crp has to be done to modify uh, to monitor the disease activity next also we calculate the complete blood count the liver profile that is a lft the kidney function test the liver function test should have to be determined initially and the baseline level should have to be recorded right now these are the first uh, we investigations what we done now also we there are certain investigations which are helpful in the diagnosis which i forgot to mention beforehand that is rheumatoid factor can uh, should have to be done anti ccp anti ccp that is anti cyclic citrullinated peptide these levels have to be monitored in the patients if it is increased and their titers are in, in higher range then it signifies that there is a high disease activity and the patient is likely to progress with the extra articular manifestations in the near future and we have to be very aggressive on the treatment sometimes there is a condition that the rheumatoid factor and the ntccp are negative or the normal but in spite of that if the patient is presenting with the typical symptoms in spite of being the negative uh, serology and the symptoms are present that is symptoms are present then also we have to label the patient as ra and start the patient on dmirds right this is very important and these patients are termed as zero negative ra zero negative ra right so there are now certain other biological markers or we can say uh, investigative markers like antibody 4 padi 4 antibodies anti car p antibodies these are the recent antibodies which have been published uh, and recently being used uh, in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis there is no role of repeating the rheumatoid factor and the anti ccp uh, again and again as once the patient is positive he remains positive throughout the treatment and there is no role of repeating these tests now once the patient is has received the conventional dmrds suppose and the patient doesn't improves then what to do the das 28 score is consistently increasing what to do then next next week have to switch on to certain biological therapies and we are there are certain other therapies like jack 2 inhibitors the most common example is tofacitinib tofacitinib baricitinib baricitinib citinib these are the drugs which are being used the other classes of drugs which are being used are anti il6 that is anti il6 this is tocilizumab tocilizumab can be used next class of drug that can be used is anti cd20 rituximab is a classical example of that then anti tnf alpha drugs anti tnf alpha drugs like etanercept abetacept sorry uh, not abetacept etanercept infliximab infliximab adalimumab adalimumab and uh, golimumab golimumab right so these kind of drugs can be used so these are the latest drugs which can be used also the abetacept abetacept can be used so these are the recent uh, advances in the drugs which can be used but before starting these drugs the caution is that we have to screen the patient for latent tb by montox test or we can say uh, ppd or we can say 
purified protein derivative for TB or we can use chest x-ray or ultrasound abdomen to determine any retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy chest x-ray to determine any the uh, opacities in the lung fields also uh, we have to be cautious about uh, diagnosing the patient as a HIV hepatitis C virus hepatitis B virus this also have to be screened after the patient has been screened after the patient has been screened for these and the patient is found to be negative only then we can start the newer uh, uh, anti-RA drugs that is a uh, what we have discussed here next if the PPD is positive or the latent TB is positive then we can start the prophylactic we can use the prophylactic treatment for one month for with isoniazid INH generally 300 milligrams once daily for six months and we can simultaneously start the DMRDs after one month after one month so in short this is the crux of the rheumatoid arthritis the diagnosis and the treatment part i hope you like the video in case you like the video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel and do comment thank you